So now we're going to take a look at E1 reactions. They uh, have a lot in common with S and 1 reactions here, and the 1 stands for the same thing. It stands for unimolecular. So only one reactant molecule involved in the rate determining step, and therefore the overall rate law will be first order. Uh, if we take a look at this one here, the first step is the exact same first step as E1, and that's carbocation formation. The leaving group leaves. So lots of leaving group leading to a carbocation here. And so it turns out, just like SN1 was all about the carbocation, E1 is also all about the carbocation. Uh, but in this case, it's just the alkyl halide, our substrate, that's going to show up in the rate law because it's the only reactant involved in this slow first step. And so in this case, our rate law would include our alkyl halide, so, but it does not include water in it at all. So in this case, double the concentration of your alkyl halide, you can double the rate. Um, Turns out the mechanism here uh, is going to be a little bit different. It's not a concerted mechanism. So again, just like SN2 is concerted and E2 is concerted, SN1 was not a concerted mechanism, and E2 is all, I'm sorry, E1 is also not going to be a concerted mechanism here. So we get lost to the leaving group first. So and then we're going to lead to proton transfer and pi bond formation. So then our base finally here, water, is going to come in and deprotonate that hydrogen, freeing up these electrons to form the pi bond. So it's still proton transfer, pi bond formation, and loss of leaving group, but split across two steps. Leave loss of leaving group first, and then proton transfer and pi bond formation happening in the second step instead. Uh, so this is going to be our E1 elimination reaction mechanism, but again, the exact same uh, slow step as in an SN1 reaction carbocation formation, and that's going to explain why they have so much in common. So just as we did with E2 and E1 here, we're going to talk about base effects first. So and in this case, we're going to find that E1 reactions typically involve a weak base, just like SN1 often involved a weak nucleophile. And the key here is, again, that the base is not involved in the rate determining step at all. It's not in the rate law. And a weak base is just fine. And you'll find out that water and alcohols are the most common here. So here I've got water, methanol, ethanol. Um, carboxylic acid might also be in the mix. But water and alcohols are by far the most common weak bases we'll see in E1 reactions. So now let's take a look at the substrate effects involved in an E1 reaction. And just like in SN1, this is all about the carbocation. And the more substituted carbocation is the more stable carbocation. So the more substituted halide you start with, the more stable the carbocation you'll form, and the lower the activation energy forming it. So as a result, tertiary halides are the fastest in an E1 reaction, followed by secondary halides. And just like in SN1, primary halides generally don't react unless they have a chance of being stabilized by resonance. Uh, and just like with E2, we don't have to worry about methyl halides for elimination reactions because they don't even have two carbons, so they can't form a carbon-carbon double bond. Uh, so again, all about the carbocation for E1 reactions. So finally, we'll look at the leaving group effects here. And again, the same for all four reactions. Once again, SN1, SN2, E1, E2. The leaving group leaves in every one of these reactions in the rate turning step. And so they have the same trend here. So uh, as far as the halides go, iodide's better than bromide's better than chloride. And again, the weaker the base, the better the leaving group. And iodide's a weaker base than bromide or chloride. Uh, but once again, if you've been introduced to sulfonate ester here, uh, OTS is a better leaving group than all the halides uh, on top of that. So, But if you haven't been introduced to it, don't worry about it. So now we want to look at both the regioselectivity as well as the stereoselectivity uh, of an E1 reaction. And E1 reactions almost always follow Zaitsev's rule here. Uh, and so again, the idea behind Zaitsev's rule is that the more substituted alkene is the more stable alkene. So you want to form the most substituted alkene possible. Now with E1, the first step being carbocation formation, you should always form that carbocation and make sure it's not going to rearrange. So like in this case, uh, leaving group is going to leave. I'm going to form a secondary carbocation here. So, and that secondary carbocation, neither adjacent carbon is going to be more stable, so it's not going to rearrange in our case. Uh, so that's our alpha carbon. We've got two beta carbons. One beta carbon is secondary, one is primary. And Zaitsev would say, form the more substituted alkene by using the more substituted beta carbon, uh, or at least deprotonating the more substituted beta carbon. And so in this case, uh, forming it in between carbons 2 and 3 leads to two stereoisomers, E and Z. So, and then forming it between uh, carbons 1 and 2 here is going to lead to our minor product, uh, the Hoffman product. So Zaitsev is the major, and we'll see that with you've got E and Z possible. Uh, here's the stereoselectivity. E is going to be favored over Z generally, simply and purely due to steric effects. So your regioselectivity is Zaitsev's law, and your stereoselectivity, if you've got E and Z both possible, E is generally favored over Z due to steric effects.